I am DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking again at Fedora. I'm going to do a few more things to it today. I'm going to show you how to add a, a, an additional local file system and also how to mount a NFS partition so that you can then use that as your NAS uh, if you want and share it between different systems. We'll talk a little bit about some of the other things you can do with it. Stay tuned right after this. Okay, so like I said at the beginning of the video, what we're going to do today is continue on with a part two of steps that you would take in setting up your distributions uh, once you have them installed. So the last time we talked about some of the things that you can do to kind of improve performance, improve the look, help your battery life, and all that good stuff. Today we're going to talk about some practical things like what if I need another drive that I want to mount onto the file system? Maybe I want to use it for backup. Maybe it's a drive that I'm using to move uh, bulk files back and forth between two systems. Maybe it's a file system that I'm sharing with, let's say, Windows or Mac um, that I want to be able to uh, you know, continue to do that. Or m as well as maybe I have a NAS and I want to mount that NAS on the file system here. So... All right, so let's 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 take it one step at a time. I'm going to try to use the GUIs, and I will show you why I don't stay in GUIs very much. Uh, it's usually because they're poorly programmed. Um, they don't follow any convention that I can use to expect to see the same kind of look, feel, environment, and options or operations that they can perform. So. Anyway, we'll, we'll kind of get into that. So I'm going to open up files. I need that. And I also need to open up disks. I need that. Because the first thing we're going to work on is, we're, this is a virtual machine still. So I have added a virtual device. And this is the one that is used for, the, for Fedora. So this is my home folder. So I don't want to mess with that. This is my Fedora directory and the operating system. So no, nope, I don't think we'll be messing with that one. But this one is completely devoid of anything. I just created it, I brought it in here, and so we're good to go, ready to go. So uh, I'm in my home folder right now, and let me, uh, I got, let me remove that bookmark there. I don't need that for right now. Uh, I will create that later. So I have my normal set of folders that are created in my home folder, but I wanna mount this one off of my home folder. I'm not going to share this drive with anybody. I just want to expand my, maybe I'm going to use this for development. And I want to make this a place where I can do my builds and my testing and staging and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and create a partition for that. How big does it need to be? Now, that there's, it's not going to be too big because the maximum on this is 34 gig, which, which is what I set it to when I set it up. So, But that's all right. This will be fine. And then I need to give it some kind of name. Let's, see, let's call it dev, because that's what we're going to do. I could go ahead and erase that drive, but, you know, I've already destroyed the partition table, so that should be sufficiently dead. Now, I have some choices here for the type of file system that I want to make. So, ext4. I, if it's ext4, I can password protect it, and, of course, it's going to add Lux on top. I can make it NTFS if I wanted to share this file system with a Windows uh, machine. So maybe I create a single file system that is then mounted uh, first whenever I boot up uh, Linux, it's mounted, and I can make add files to it. And I can also add it and mount it to Windows so that both of them, when they are up, respectively, see the same file. So that, that's one advantage to doing that. So if you're migrating from Windows, that would give you a way to share data back and forth. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make it other. I, I don't want ext4. So what do I get here for choices? So after hitting next, I get ex or xfs. I can create a swap partition. So if, if you want to, if you didn't add one and you want to add one after the fact, you can do that. Uh, and it doesn't have to be on that drive. It, it can be on any drive. Uh, it's, they recommend that you put it on that one, but in order so that you keep your IOs all contained on one on one part. For your operating system. ButterFS, uh, 
F2FS is grayed out because it's not installed. Yeah, it says the, so if I installed it, F2FS would be available. Also, UDF, the universal disk format, is missing too because it's not installed. One of the things that I would have expected to see here, being that this is Fedora, is I would have expected to have seen the Red Hat file system that they're working on. And so I don't see that, which is weird. But, oh well. Um, and that's what I mean by consistency. There is no consistency in the way these applets are written. So, and this is, this is written by the same group that does know. So I'm going to do a create. I want XFS. That's what I want. And it's asking me for my user password. So we'll put that in. And now I have an XFS partition here. You'll notice this little play button. That's my mount button. So it says mount select partition. But you need to pay attention to where it's going to get mounted. And right now we don't know, right? We have no clue where that's going to get mounted until it goes out and does it. So this gear right here allows me to look at some of the options for it. So um, the first thing I want to do is I want to edit my mount options here. And these are my defaults. So I, I don't want defaults. We're going to get rid of that. Because remember, I said I want to mount this off my home folder. So down here at the mount point, these are OK. These are just options that it passes on the command line. This is identifying the drive as a UUID. The reason why, let's just go through this. So the reason why they use UUIDs is those are unique identifiers. That has to do with anytime we make changes to the partition map on, the, on that particular drive, that gets this number and string of characters gets recalculated uh, every time there's a change. That way you know that you're mounting the latest thing. So if you, and that, that will change. So that this UUID is going to change if I go back out and resize this partition, maybe add another one onto it. If I delete it in any way, yeah, that's all going to change it. So anyway, let's go ahead. I want it in slash home, DJ where, and we're going to call this dev. All right. And then you'll notice it says auto down here. It just says any uh, any file system that is currently installed on the file on the uh, system, uh, any of the utilities that are installed on the system will work. Okay, it'll identify it at the at the mount time what kind of file system it is. All right, so I have to give my password again. Okay, so one more thing we need to do. I'm running this as root, right? I'm creating all this stuff as root. So I need to take ownership of this. So we need to take, we need to do that so that my owner of this partition is me. Otherwise, I won't be able to write to it. I won't be able to do much with it. Okay, I think we're good to go. So let's go ahead and mount it. We'll go ahead and hit the play button. And yeah, For, you know, why do you keep asking me? This is stuff that drives me crazy. Uh, when I'm on a command line, it doesn't ask me 15 times for the root password. So anyway, I don't know what advantage that has. So it is now mounted, and I can click that, and it'll take me, hopefully, into this. There we go. And right now, it is not finished with the build-out. So we'll, we'll just wait. I'll just go ahead and close that up for right now. Let's see who actually owns it. It's owned by DJWare. Okay, so this this problem here just needs to be refreshed. But is there a refresh? No. We refresh it the old-fashioned way by launching it. Yeah, Control-Alt-Delete. Uh, all right, so I'm going to make a project file. And I'm going to make a testing file. And we're going to make a staging. And I'll probably make a packaging file at some point, too. So, okay, so this is all set up. It's great. And I want, I would like this to show up in my shortcuts, right? Because it's not showing up there. So I could, I could add it right here, which is a bookmark. So now I have my dev, and then I can, I think I can slide that up. No. Damn it. 
All right. <laughs> okay. So now I have this one done. So what about, what about um, I want to assign, I'd like to have NFS mounted. Now, I can't do much with the GUIs here to do it because, uh, let me just show you. So you'll notice here that uh, if I look down here, I could put in my, so my available uh, protocols are <clears throat> Apple Talk, FTP, Samba, SSH file transfer protocol, WebDAV. That's it. Again, uh, hello, guys. Linux uses native NFS. Why is NFS not part of this? I don't know. So, yeah, that's why GUIs suck. That's why GUIs suck. So what do I do? Uh, well, I have to go out on the command line to do this because there's no other way to do it. So... Uh, so, so I'm going to do a sudo su, yeah, let's go ahead and just sign in. So I don't have to keep giving it the root password. So the first thing I need to do is just make a directory called NAS. Oh, okay. So it already exists from a previous test. So it's already out there, but you would create it. You'll see it's it's owned by root. That's fine. We'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, the next thing I need to do is to make sure that I think it's NFS Utils on yeah. So it's already installed. So there's nothing to do here. So yeah, it's already installed. So the next thing I need to do is Again, don't have to do that. I need to go and edit my FS tab. And there's the entry it just created for that other drive. And did we explain new UIDs? I think we did. All right, so I need to have Blue Ice in here, which is the machine that hosts that file. I'll give it a fully qualified domain name. And then two slashes. This is the drive mount. It is ZFS. And, yep, that's where it's coming from. That is where it's going to get mounted. It is an NFS type 4. And I could add some other thing here if I want. And then zero and one, which says do this at, at boot time. So, again, don't have to do that. Oh, I see that Pottering has been busy making our life even more complicated because he can't automatically reload these things himself. One of the things that I have a pet peeve about is that if a program realizes that there's something that needs to get done, do it. Shut up. Stop asking me to do it. You already know it needs to get done. Do it. Just do it. That's just stupid. Why am I having to reload the daemon? That's dumb. Anyway, um, these systems are all dynamic. Hello. Uh, all right, so let's try to mount it. Again, we don't need the sudo. Let's stay. Bad, bad habits. All right, so hopefully, there it is. Let's see what we have as for the owner. The owner is 10011001. Okay, that happens to be my network owner, my network ID. Um, so uh, I need to create the user for that, and then everything will be hunky dory. But uh, right now, my access to that is going to be somewhat limited. So yeah, but that's okay. That's all right. So all right, I want to go to other locations. We want to go to computer. I'm going to scroll down here to NAS, and then I'm going to make a bookmark for it. Okay, and then all I have to do it now is when I'm in here, there's my, there's my drive. Piece of cake. So, one of the problems that do, do not use this tool to, if you're going to make changes to this, or you're going to delete it, remove the mount point, don't do it from here. You can use this to delete the partition, 
and you can use it to unmount it, but you'll, it won't clean up your FS tab. You'll, you'll still need to do that. And it won't remove the directory that it created in your file system. So that's one of the uh, second problem I have with most of these GUIs that are on at least GNOME as they're not complete. None of them are complete. So the, the reason I say that is, is you will notice here on this. I can edit the partition. I can, I can, I can edit the mount options. I can create the mount options, but I can't delete it. There's no delete in here. So we have a we have a principle. It's called CRUD. It's been around since probably the beginning of programming. Uh, I know. I remember. Uh, Captain, Captain at the time, Captain Grace Hopper, <laughs> explaining it to a bunch of us back in, back in the uh, dark ages when we used candles and chiseled out things on rock. But um, CRUD, CRUD stands for, if I have any kind of operation that does a creation of a resource, like a file system and a mount, then I have to, I should, by convention, I have three more I have to write. So that's why I call it CRUD. CRUD is create, that's the C. R is read, which means I have to read in whatever those values are. And it does that. It shows me that right here. So it is doing the read part. It needs to be able to update it, which I can do. I can go in here and I can edit the mount options. I can edit those just fine. Um, and then delete, and that's the part they're missing. There's no place in here to do a delete. So what did we learn? We learned how to take an external disk drive and mount it off my home directory, but it can mount it anywhere you want. You can also make that any kind of a file system you want as well that, that's declared in the list. Also showed you how to mount a NFS file system. Unfortunately, the tools that we have, at least with GNOME, don't allow me to mount an NFS share. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you again in the next one and bye for now.